eti foe mo kwa baba dela biti mese sene na bacha na iso hita domon subscribe or like it shema wane pense mi bie jesu enye binti jemre ni adaji mungre si mni nene den sima yutre guno ye fa emo ense mnina emre mo na eti foe ye bovro ma na ye bovro mo eti foe eti edunketi ya wa faya jeme sa pa 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 se fraudulent voter register no mwen disi foe die ay omon prende na die ne koswa ho ye mungre mo na yinti omon ense election so if you get the register wrong then everything begins to crumble it means you are building on a weak foundation we have said that the register that allows people to be transferred to other polling stations other regions without their consent is a very very serious omission in our electoral processes whenever you talk about credibility of the register the response has always been that it is because the register has challenges that is why we embark on exhibition but this particular challenge actually rocks the foundation of the register itself and it undermines the right of the people to choose their leadership and to vote at polling stations they have chosen for themselves. So if it is possible for a voter to be transferred from his polling station to a place outside his region completely, and in this case, the commission has accepted that indeed that has happened. So we ask ourselves, then the protocols for the transfer and the safeguards against transferring people against their wish have been breached. How is it possible that these protocols the commission has been calling robots, 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 on their own admission have been breached so easily? And so it undermines the confidence that we have in the voters' register. As I stand here, I don't know that the day I'll go to cast my vote in Bono, I'll be told that my vote is in Bolivar. And I, I think that this is the reason why we are calling for a complete audit of the IT systems of the Electoral Commission to try and answer the question as to why. Is it possible for any district officer anywhere who decides to transfer names of people to places not of their choosing? Is it possible? And they have said that it is possible. If it is possible, then we are not safe. And so we want to, we want an independent audit of the system. And if there is a way of breaching whatever protocol they have in place for transferring of names across the FM, then we will find ways of uh, checking that one because it goes to the foundation of the confidence we have in the voters register. We have appealed to our development partners because we know a hippie country, the easiest response from government will be that there is no money to undertake that audit. That's why we've uh, contacted our development partners and they are more than willing to help us to audit the IT systems so long as the Commission itself is willing to open up. And so we are appealing to the Commission that they must do the needful before we get into the, 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 the elections. And we must get a credible register before the printing of ballot papers. Because if ballot papers are printed based on a register that is not credible, then the election has been undermined completely. This is the second term since the, the coming into office of this new commission that we have had to file nominations based on a draft register. I have always said that it is wrong. And they must do everything to correct that one because a draft register it's not a register. Today, if we have to go into any election,
to have to be relying on the 2020 register because the, that register expires at the time that a new register has been certified and approved. So we have a register that is in existence and then a draft register yet to be certified. So if we are filing these nominations based on that draft register, then very problematic. I hope the commission would not disqualify anybody based on the fact that a final register has 100.5 I stop let me clarify when we said we have appealed to our development partners to support the auditing of the IT system. Some people have misconstrued that one to mean that we are handing over our IT systems to external partners. No. Whatever we have to do has to be paid for. I don't see the problem where external parties are helping to support the main election. And you don't have any problem with that. If those external parties are helping by way of funding to get uh, consultants to review the IT system to ensure that the whole nation has credit, uh, has a trust in the register, you have problems. And it's been done before. Because, uh, you know, before becoming national chairman, I've been general secretary for 17 years. And uh, I have seen so many things happen. And there were occasions where the UNDP sponsored a consultant to review the IT systems of the Electoral Commission. Heaven didn't break loose, but the effect was that the report became acceptable for all of us, and everybody went into that election satisfied that nothing uh, untoward will happen to the results. That's how we, we proceed. And then, apart from that, there were challenges raised about the register and the inclusion of some wrong names. Then, too, the then chairperson of the Electoral Commission, together with uh, IPAC, fielded another team made up of eminent persons to listen to all the concerns of the various political parties. It didn't end there. We held a public forum covered countrywide at uh, Alisa Hotel, and all the, the, those who had issues were called to ventilate those issues, and those who had responses were also asked to do the responses. A report was presented, and we all went into the elections satisfied with the outcome. And so I don't think that this should, uh, a commission that is interested in its own credibility and in the, the, the population accepted the credibility of the results of their work would have any problems at all. If you don't have anything to hide, why are you running up? I tell you, for some way, in Jamaica, crying, I'm coping at my same December, and I'm back to a bus or nanny, and I say, Bedjam Ray, near Boss from John Devro, a chair of my gun, and can kind this a manuku, and then be a manuku. And um, you have been asking us, we have it's about missing a uh, cannot, I cannot, uh, you know, enumerate here, and you, the media people were with some of our people who intercepted and retrieved one of the stolen DVRs. Uh, uh, so far, we don't have any response. We don't have any feedback as to how the, 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 the uh, progress is being made on the case involving those who allegedly have been arrested here at your commission and so on. This all generates Across a lot of, uh, you know, crowd suspicion and all that. And so, those of you who have been asking us, if they don't comply, what would you do? This is your answer. On the 17th of this month, the NDC is embarking on a massive nationwide demonstration in all 16 regional capitals. Descend on the Electoral Commission offices 
and we in Accra will descend to the headquarters and present further petitions as to why we think that we sh they should conduct themselves in a manner that will uh, guarantee peaceful, free, and fair elections. I hope you will be with us, you will follow us, and that takes us to. Thank you very much, and may God bless our whole world. Accra FM, 100.5. Promises to extend free SHS to cover the private senior high schools. Not only is he promising to dedicate a fund to free senior high school, but he's extending it to cover the private senior high schools. What do we mean? We have students who can't go into the public senior high schools, basically because the public senior high schools are full. But we have empty private senior high schools. If we can educate people at the same cost that we are educating people in the public senior, um, senior high schools, in the private secondary schools, why do we leave the private secondary schools over there? Let's move them there and pay the same cost for them. And I think this is a very laudable initiative for which you should clap for John Bahama. I don't know if you're excited about the few policies I've mentioned yet, but if you're not excited, I'm sure the next one is going to shock you. I want you all to say with me, no fees stress. No fees stress. What are we saying? President John Mahama is simply promising that one, for all university entrants into level 100, you are not paying academic fees. No academic fees for all level 100 students. We, we've heard the many stories. We've heard the many stories about students who finish school with 6 A's, 7 A's, 8 A's, and we have to start crowdfunding sources for them so they can enter into university. All of that would be a thing of the past in the next NDC administration. The second part of this policy is the Student Loan Trust Fund Plus. The student loan is basically dead as it is. When President Mahama comes back, he would revamp the Student Loan Trust Fund. And all those who struggle after the first year free academic tuition in university can apply to the Student Loan Trust Fund so they are able to continue their education without stress. So when I say education with Mahama, you say no fees stress. Education with Mahama states our educational system is not the very best. We have overcrowding in our public schools. We have people who have finished senior high school and can progress into the universities. Now let me highlight a few of the policies. Call the future of this country is what is on the ballot. It is what His Excellency completely understands. For which reason he will establish a ministry of youth development to for the first time if you're clapping, clap properly for His Excellency to for the first time place the interests of young people front and centre and mainstream youth affairs we have a plethora of youth agencies across this country, yet young people are not able to access opportunity. What we need is to centralize these efforts, harmonize them, and ensure there is a one-stop shop that deals with all youth matters in the youth ministry, what John Dramani Mahama will do for young people. As we are talking about political inclusion, young people, let us join hands on 7 December to elect an inclusive ticket. A ticket that will usher in Ghana's first female vice president. So our sisters, our daughters, our lady friends will look to the Flagstaff House and look to the presidency and see themselves represented. Let's redefine what it means to lead this country and have a woman 
at the head of the ticket with his excellency. Direct, as, 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 additionally, there's a matter of national service. We have a national service scheme that has been systematically collapsed by this government. And there are countless young people who are willing to work, but are not able to work. If people want to work, let them work. Which is why the national service scheme will be retooled under His Excellency so all young people who are 18 years and over can volunteer to work for our nation. And when they are working, His Excellency says that recognizing their labor would ensure they are paid a living wage, a decent wage befitting of persons who are sacrificing for this nation. Yeah,